So to round out the first day of Theacon, uh, um, we're going to answer the question, why Eclipse Thea? And I'm delighted to introduce Mark Dumais. Uh, he's been working at Ericsson for over 20 years, developing tools that help boost the productivity of colleagues developing cellular infrastructure. In the last 10 years, he has been involved in open source software, leveraging the vast bounty of community contributed software to help fulfill his employer's needs. Um, he has been involved early on, co-leading the Eclipse Thea project and leading the internal Ericsson team that contributes to the project daily. So thank you, Mark. Go ahead. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we have a lot of information uh, to uh, in this session, so let's get going. Thanks, everyone, for joining, by the way. So what is Eclipse Thea? Well, as you might know, Thea is a fully open source cloud and desktop ID framework. It's designed to be modular, extensible, customizable. Uh, you can make uh, ID and ID likes application from it with all these characteristics. So it's, often it's important to know uh, what's out of scope, what the AI does not aim to solve. So a couple of quick mentions here. Uh, we do not intend to support multi-user directly, things like multi-tenancy and authentication. This is left for uh, extenders to do, for example, uh, a solution like Che will cover these aspects. Uh, the creation of the development environment is also out of scope. We can, uh, the application can easily consume them, but creating them is uh, out of scope. And we do not aim to be a, a vanilla uh, ID product or have a vanilla ID product that will compete directly with VS Code. Though, uh, as mentioned earlier today uh, by Jonas, uh, we do have something called Thea Blueprint that uh, uh, without guarantees, it, it can come close to that. Okay, the meat of the presentation. So we created Thea. Uh, I think the anniversary of us starting to work on it uh, will be soon, uh, uh, maybe in a month or so. It will be the five-year anniversary. Uh, and at the time, we created Thea because we found nothing existing that satisfied all our requirements. Still today, most of these things are applicable. Uh, and uh, so what we have here is a maybe slightly evolved version of the of why we created Thea initially, and I guess uh, why, depending on your use case, uh, Thea could be uh, an attractive solution for you uh, and your uh, development needs. So the, the first category, oh, uh, let's backtrack a second. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I used to have this uh, later in the presentation before, but the, the more we go forward, the more I think this is really the key. Uh, the fact that Thea and uh, related components are truly FUS and hosted in a vendor neutral um, uh, foundation uh, where we have this governance that helps us uh, uh, collaborate on things that make sense to collaborate on even with competitors in theory. Uh, of course, at the time, uh, one of the big feature that Thea had as a framework was to permit having ID and ID-like application uh, work uh, from the browser. So today, this is no longer a totally distinguishing feature, uh, but it can still be uh, a good thing to have. Uh, the fact that well, we wanted it's still not something that is multi-language and in an IDE or framework in which you can easily add support for uh, additional languages. You want it to be extensible and customizable, uh, more so than just, um, for example, uh, forking the VS Code repository and tweaking it here and there, but that even the core of it can be extended uh, in, in a nice maintainable way. And if you're going to build something new or look for something uh, to base, uh, to invest on for the next, long while uh, for your envir development environment, you want it to be based on at least the best that is available at the beginning at that time. So yeah, we'll, we'll go into that, but we, we pretty much have that. Okay, first category that uh, in my humble opinion might be the most important of them all. Uh, we needed something that was truly uh, uh, free open source software. Um, that we could collaborate on uh, even with uh, potentially competitors for 
whatever part of uh, the businesses do not, uh, you know, we do not compete on. IDs uh, can be, uh, that can be an ID for many companies. Uh, and not just be there on your own, but uh, have others help you build it. You know, something, something of a community effort uh, instead of everyone building their own little thing uh, by themselves. Collaborate and build something better together. So, um, how, how is Thea from that point of view, uh, from the truly fast point of view? Uh, I would argue it is. Uh, it cannot be more fast. Uh, so all the code is fast. Uh, it's licensed under the Eclipse Foundation license, the EPL, uh, which is, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but it is said to be a, a rather business-friendly uh, license and it allows uh, commercial use. Uh, if you, like me, you grew up in the 70s, 80s, you'll know that most nice toys need batteries and they are never included. Well, in this case, they are. So it's not uh, uh, half of the framework that is fast and the rest uh, you need to pay for it or anything like that. It's everything, everything that we do uh, at the foundation is completely uh, fast. So no component missing or anything like that. Um, something that is often neglected, yes, it, it is possible to fork any uh, open source project and uh, do something slightly different with it. But uh, the more you diverge from that project, uh, that your code diverges, the more uh, maintenance effort it is to keep it updated, uh, especially if the upstream project goes, uh, goes fast and has a lot of uh, action, like, uh, for example, the VS Code repository on GitHub. So uh, it, it's very nice to find something, a component uh, on GitHub that does exactly what you want. Uh, and you know the maintainer seems to be friendly and uh, you, you, you figure, yeah, okay, let's adapt this component. <clears throat> However, uh, when you do that, you're at the mercy of the author uh, of the component unless uh, that component happens to be in something like uh, an open source foundation. So in our case, Thea is in the Eclipse Foundation, uh, and this brings in uh, some um, requirement that the project follow the rules of the Eclipse Foundation, that we be open, transparent, and all kind of good things. Uh, these things make it possible to collaborate. Uh, even between competing companies, we can collaborate at least on things, uh, on some things. Uh, uh, like the tooling, uh, the ID. <laughs> uh, some of the characteristic of being an open project, uh, vendor neutral, is that we welcome, uh, like all, all Eclipse Foundation project contribution from anyone. It doesn't matter who you work for, if their contribution is uh, technically uh, uh, worthy. Uh, like other Eclipse Foundation project, uh, it is a meritocracy where uh, those who do the most decide the most. The project is uh, the direction, the technical direction of the project is uh, in the hands of the committers. And to become a committer, you need to show um, that you have the skills and the dedication uh, uh, as a contributor in the project first. So it is all based on what people do and companies that have many committers or several committers have more weight in the project to decide on the technical direction. Uh, and I want to mention that uh, when we started there, we were not yet in the Eclipse Foundation. We started just on GitHub and then we moved to the foundation and it made us really realize how important and good it is to uh, have help about a bunch of aspects in the project that as a software developer, you may not be uh, very knowledgeable about when you start. So things like uh, vetting the licenses of your dependencies, uh, uh, not easy in the case of something like Thea that has so many dependencies, but it's essential. And uh, managing the security vulnerability, vulnerability, people will sometimes report that they have found some vulnerability about your project and it, it needs to be managed a certain way. And the foundation has a team that helps us with that, I'll, as well as uh, communicating, marketing, and as is uh, exemplified today in, with this event, Tiacon, uh, the Eclipse Foundation helps us with organizing such events, makes it uh, key in hand uh, from the point of view of the project. We just need to help with uh, the program and they take care of everything else. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, now let's contrast. Uh, th th this is the type of uh, ecosystem that we want, fully open source. 
Uh, and I, I want to mention here that I am not bashing on VS Code or Microsoft. Uh, personally, I, I use and love VS Code, and it has been a huge inspiration uh, for myself and I believe many people in the TEA project. Uh, we certainly borrow from it, and um, uh, we benefit. Uh, we are very, very grateful of the fact that it is uh, available as MIT software. Uh, however, it is not FOSS or fully FOSS in the sense that I talk about today. Um, VS Code is owned by Microsoft, and they do what they want with it, uh, and they are completely in their right to do that. But they do not, I think, from what I witness anyway, intend to build a community uh, around it and make it a, uh, a platform or a framework for people to build their own ID on. It is more, uh, uh, they make the source code available, and you may use it uh, as long as you follow the license. But I don't think uh, there's really any community around it like we have for TEA. As well, though there is a MIT repo for VS Code, it is distinct from the VS Code product. So the VS Code product is built from that repo plus some other things, from what I understand. Uh, so it is close to it, very close, but it is not, uh, the VS Code product as itself is not FOSS. It's not, uh, if you look at the license, you'll see it's proprietary and you have your rights, what you can do with it are limited. Um, so let's say you build your own from the VS Code MIT sources, you will get something very, very similar. And then when you look into it, you realize that the marketplace, the Microsoft marketplace, you're not technically legally allowed to use it because what you have compiled is not a, an official VS Code product. So here is a big piece that is missing uh, that you would otherwise uh, have, um, that, that you would need uh, if you want to make it convenient for your users to install extensions. Uh, you don't have it, unfortunately, in the VS Code ecosystem. Another example, if you're a C++ developer, the CPP tool extension uh, at least used to be quite popular on VS Code, probably still is. Um, unfortunately, you're not allowed to use it. Uh, there's a proper or component or twin there. You're not allowed to use it on anything but an official VS Code product. The VS Code remote extension family, same thing. These extensions are quite uh, quite popular, I think. Uh, for they came out a couple of years ago, and um, you can use them in VS Code all you want in the official product, but not in anything that is not the official VS Code product. So um, yeah, uh, you get a lot, and uh, we are grateful for what we get under MIT. But this is not a you know a battery included situation. And VS Code is what it is, and it is uh, Microsoft that decides where it goes. Uh, not the community, not contributors. You can uh, open pull requests, but if what you propose it does not go into the set in direction of uh, business interest they might have, most probably it will be rejected. So however good VS Code is as a product, uh, and I, I love it myself, if you want to make something different, uh, uh, mix it up, add features, it, it, if you cannot do it in the form of a VS Code extension, uh, it, it becomes more difficult. And uh, I wanted to mention that, well, TEA uh, is a big pro uh, project by itself, but we rely and we, we use um, other Eclipse Foundation project and even stuff that is uh, you know generally open source beyond the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, so here are a few examples of important things that we reuse from the foundation. Uh, I just mentioned the marketplace, uh, uh, the Microsoft marketplace that is not available to us. Well, we have an alternative, the Eclipse OpenVSX uh, project and the registry, uh, openvsx.org, that is related. We use also the JDT.ls uh, through the Java by Red Hat VS Code extension. So that's the language server uh, based on JDT. So um, I, I believe this is the language server that is predominant on VS Code uh, uh, at the moment, and we reuse it in, in TEA. So another Eclipse Foundation project or sub project. Uh, we use the CDTGDB adapter for C++ debugging. So this is uh, under currently under the CDT project, Eclipse CDT. <clears throat> uh, and well, we have EMF Cloud and a, a bunch of other things at the foundation that are uh, starting to grow, I would say, around the TEA, around TEA and become part of its ecosystem. 
All right, so if we keep a little uh, scorecard just for fun of it, uh, we have TEA and classic Eclipse uh, IDEs that are really good at being uh, truly fast and having a community be community driven and uh, uh, with uh, you know a nice ecosystem around them, much more so than VS Code. Uh, so that's the score for this category. <clears throat> Second category, uh, the well technology stack. So uh, you always want to have, uh, you know, as uh, nice a technology stack as you can get. So in our case, uh, I, I think it is still a, a good technology stack in 2021. Uh, it was certainly uh, uh, very good when we started in 2016, 17. Uh, so by being in the TypeScript ecosystem, using TypeScript, we can transpile to JavaScript. Uh, which means that we can run in uh, uh, Node and in uh, browsers. We have these two runtimes, front and back end. And yeah, I think uh, that's about uh, it for that category. If we keep the uh, look at the scorecard, well, uh, classic Eclipse, uh, it is very good and it will be used for a very long time, but it is based on slightly older technology. So in this case, it uh, does a, a bit less well than what we wanted at the time and a bit less well than you can get to the uh, Intia or VS Code. Um, one I mentioned earlier, uh, at the beginning, when we started Thea, being able to run on the desktop was easy. Uh, all, yeah, the, all IDs back then and the editors ran on the desktop. Running in a browser was uh, the real innovation, running nicely in a browser, I would say, with uh, uh, low, you know, very nice uh, user experience, no latency. And nowadays, it's no longer so exclusive as a feature, but I, I believe it's still a good um, feature to be able to offer both kind of transparently. Uh, so we have many uh, TIA example project where uh, from the same source code, basically you compile either the browser or the Electron version of TIA. Um, they are technically the same. It's in both cases, you have a, a front end in, running in a browser and a back end running in Node.js. The main difference is for the desktop, we wrap them into Electron, uh, and it looks and behaves like a native application. So this is exactly like VS Code. VS Code runs in Electron as well. Uh, so yeah, from one code base, you can get both here. Uh, all right, so uh, being cloud, supporting both cloud and desktop, uh, like we saw Thea does. Uh, Eclipse Classic. Um, though there are, uh, I've seen efforts to cloudify it, it is not quite as native, uh, in my opinion, as, as TEA. Uh, but, uh, well, it is what it is. It's older technology for sure. And, well, Visual Studio Code, uh, I used to put question mark, but I think, uh, I think we can see it now. It pretty much runs in the browser, or you can. Uh, yeah. Okay. So on the, and another of the four or so big aspect is this one, uh, multi-language, extensible, customizable. Uh, multi-language, it is pretty much a given nowadays, I think, that IDEs support language server protocol. Um, this is a, a phenomenal uh, innovation by Microsoft, uh, where the uh, previously, basically, you needed each ID or editor that supported a uh, given language needed pretty much a new implementation of everything that would um, uh, support in this particular ID or editor the intelligence of the language. It was um, uh, rarely reusable from one ID or editor to the other, even if they were programmed in the same language. It needed to be redone, and it was often not done very well. Microsoft took that. Uh, factored out the intelligence uh, into a server that runs in a separate process and made a client that is very dumb uh, and that will just ask the server, hey, I'm pointing there, what is there? And the server can say, oh, this is a class, this is an object, and so on. The server can give all the information. So when you factor that, in theory, any editor or ID that has a base uh, language server protocol client can reuse the servers uh, that already exist. So you go from a huge number of implementation, most of them not very good, to probably a few language server that get to be very good after a while. So we support that. VS Code does too, uh, obviously. Um, we wanted to be, uh, and we wanted the uh, an IDE or IDE uh, framework that is extensible and customizable. Um, so from 
that point of view, uh, hmm. All right, maybe a mix, slight missed up in, in the order of the slides, I think. But uh, yeah, but on multi language, uh, we and VS Code support it really well through LSP. Uh, Eclipse Classic uh, does, uh, as a project, support language server protocol, but uh, it has not been retrofitted in all the popular Eclipse based IDs like CDT, for example, but it might well be in the future. So I don't want to say it does not support LSP at all, but um, it's not integrated from the get-go like it was in our VS Code. Um, so uh, about the extensibility and customizability. Uh, TEA, um, like VS Code, you can use VS Code extensions in TEA. So there, it, it is an extension mechanism, but it is limited to what is available to the VS Code extension API. And um, well, that, that it, it is pretty limited. It is good to add language report into the IDE, but it is not necessarily generally good. There are things that you cannot achieve uh, through a VS Code extension uh, that we can through a TA extension. So uh, let me walk you through quickly uh, what a TA extension looks like. So we have uh, an extension as two parts, a front end and a back end contribution. Uh, they are packaged in the form of NPM packages. One extension is a bit special. It's called Core. Uh, it contains in a, essentially the TA framework. So you need that one always. Uh, then there are a bunch of other extensions that uh, you may probably want uh, from the from the framework. So you will take them all together, and you when we uh, we compile them, basically we end up with two applications uh, built from all the contribution from front end and back end, and. What is the role of each of these applications? Well, in the front end, it's where you have the UI. It's where you have the state of the IDE. Uh, it runs on the Monaco editor that we uh, reuse from VS Code. Uh, this is where TextMate highlighting happens. And uh, this, is, uh, yeah, this is basically the UI and the state of the IDE. And in the back end, you have basically the services. So uh, things that uh, you cannot get in the browser application, uh, the file system, the ability to spawn uh, other processes like the language server uh, uh, and miscellaneous things. Uh, but uh, important to note is that you get um, not only those applications, but uh, baked in the communication between the two as well. So uh, uh, as uh, when you start the, the front end application, it will connect to the to the back end automatically, and uh, uh, you know the communication between the two uh, will happen uh, without you having to do anything else. Another extension mechanism, great contribution from Red Hat in 2018, uh, the plugin system. This is through the plugin system that we support VS Code extensions. Uh, a mechanism that we use at the framework level uh, to permit extending it is dependency injection through inversify.js. Um, so it, it, it permits you to replace basically the code that is executed. Um, without editing the framework code itself. You can do it in, in a separate file, uh, which makes it pretty powerful. Uh, you don't need necessarily to have a TA fork where you do your um, your corrections. You could uh, uh, patch the framework uh, you know, in a different code base uh, built in a different extension. So this is something that I, I well, I, as far as I know, there's no comparable in, in VS Code. So taking all that into account, and of course, VS Code supports VS Code extension, but uh, that's about the limit of the extensibility. Uh, TEA uh, and Classic Eclipse uh, are, are way more extensible and customizable if you want to build your own uh, application rather than have the vanilla uh, product. Uh, now, uh, all these uh, four things are, are, are very good, but I think the, the bedrock uh, of a project, uh, an open source project, is its community. Uh, so this is uh, really the foundation uh, that we have. You can see uh, here uh, some of the uh, contributing companies that, uh, that, that comprise uh, uh, our community or that are adopters and contributors to TI and extenders. Um, it is just partial. There are more companies than that. Uh, most of them have committers. So here is a, uh, I, I took the main TI repo. So it's only one repository among many. 
And I, I ran the command you see above just to get a list of all the contributors and uh, basically just extracted the, the, the email domains to get an idea of who are contributors. Uh, and you can see a, a rough breakdown here. Uh, so the, the entries that have uh, stars uh, besides, uh, they are companies that have one or more committer on the project. They are not only contributors, but uh, they, they, they have committers. So uh, this is uh, a, a recap uh, slide, uh, the different aspects that we have uh, discussed today. Um, so, sorry, uh, emergency alert uh, test apparently. Um, yeah, uh, to recap, uh, if you want something that is truly fast, something that you can uh, upstream code to uh, um, whoever who, who your, who your employer may be uh, and be judged on the technical um, uh, uh, proness of the, uh, the contribution in question rather than uh, other factors. Uh, uh, or even classic Eclipse project are really uh, superior. Uh, technology stack, if you want something that is modern, uh, can run uh, in, the, in the browser that um, um, uh, yeah, is uh, suitable to, uh, for, to include in, um, in cloud applications, then, the, then TEA uh, and potentially VS Code uh, are something to look into. If you want uh, to be able to build uh, more or less from the same code, uh, also a, a um, desktop version of your product, uh, then potentially, uh, yeah, TEA and uh, NVS code might be interesting. If you want something that is extensible uh, beyond being able to add languages, to be able to customize it in a maintainable way, uh, so that you can, uh, you know, not uh, have a huge burden going forward uh, with it for a long time uh, or you know, some industries, they keep the development environment for decades. Um, then you want something with good extensibility that will permit you to do that uh, as efficiently as possible. Then I think uh, TEA or uh, even classic Eclipse project are the way to go. Uh, Eclipse uh, IDs, sorry. Uh, something that supports LSP and DAP so that you may at the very least reuse very good uh, language servers. TEA or VS Code. If you want something that has a vibrant community, uh, well, you will not be alone. Um, you know, uh, redoing the same thing as others are are, are doing. Uh, you know, everybody forking uh, VS Code, for example, and having the same problems, reinventing the wheel. If you want to be able to uh, take these common things and uh, factor them out and work on them as a community then uh, a really, truly fast project like Eclipse Thea, uh, I think, uh, is the way to go. So I have a few links uh, you know, uh, around Thea uh, if you want more information. Uh, I think uh, I, I would suggest very strongly uh, to watch uh, or rewatch uh, Jonas's presentation this morning that had uh, uh, way, way more information uh, for new or potentially new contributors to the framework. Um, but this is maybe a starting point, at least. So uh, that's it. Um, I, I'm not sure time-wise uh, where we are. Uh, but I uh, would uh, welcome questions if there are any. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, a very compelling um, presentation. The, the first question is, was that alert that you got on your phone that the build for Thea on Moon was failing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe it was the emergency broadcast system, whatever you call it. Okay, so you haven't quite hooked up the build system to uh, mobile alerts yet. I think I'll, I'll open an, an issue on that. <laughs> or it, it will not sound out uh, in the middle of my presentation. I think you, there's nothing you can do to override these alerts on your phone. Or in the middle of the night either, we wouldn't want that. Um, so we're welcoming back in uh, Tim. Um, to say a few words to round out today. Um, I hope you 
Hope you all enjoyed the, the sessions today. We had a couple of technical uh, glitches, um, so we will learn from them. Um, and yeah, we've got a we've got a full agenda tomorrow. So please join us, Tim. Uh, thanks, Brian. Uh, yeah, I can uh, confirm. Uh, I got my emergency broadcast test maybe twenty minutes before Mark. So I don't know if they're working west to east or something, but uh, yeah, that, that's what that was. Uh, and we always have uh, technical issues with, uh, yeah, uh, a conference involving 30 people uh, on online on a new platform. Uh, but we, we work through it. Um, so, yeah, if there are any questions about uh, Mark's session or uh, any of the sessions today, uh, please feel free to enter them in the, the platform. Just ask a question. Um, uh, if you miss us now, uh, Slack is always available. Um, we have uh, uh, a room already, a channel on uh, Slack for this conference. Um, and even after the conference, you can post there or to one of the other Slack uh, channels. Um, and if we uh, don't have any questions, um, thank you for joining. And uh, we will be restarting again at uh, 4 p.m. Central European time, 10 a.m. Eastern and uh, 7 a.m. Um, Pacific time. Um, and Brian will uh, once again be doing uh, an overview of the day, and then we'll get straight into the first session. Um, so I don't see anything online, uh, Mark or Brian. Do you have anything else that we need to mention today? Um, it could be everyone attending or already sold on there. Yeah, could be. Mark, I, I, I'd like to just maybe elaborate a little bit on um, OpenVSX. You mentioned it in your talk. Um, mm -hmm. For example, I think it's worth mentioning that um, it's not just Thea-based applications that are consuming extensions from there, right? It's it's, it's other other clients like uh, Gitpod and VS Code and, and so on. So basically, mm -hmm. any application uh, that's not a Microsoft product um, that supports VS Code extensions can can use OpenVSX, right? Correct. Uh, and more than that, uh, the um, it, it's possible to run your own OpenVSX server on premise if you don't want um, um, to give access to uh, the online one. Uh, you know, the, the uh, OpenVSX.org or or some development environment will not have internet access, for example. Yeah, it is easy to, to set that up uh, inside your enterprise if you need to. Um, yeah, Mark, that uh, reminded me, uh, you talked about uh, LSPs as a, a great invention. Um, so I, I thought they were a great idea when I saw them the first time and I saw that you know VS Code had uh, most of the, the Java smarts from Eclipse <laughs> running in you know a different IDE and that was awesome. But um, it wasn't until Thea implemented LSP and then suddenly you saw everything that worked in VS Code suddenly work in yet another IDE. Uh, that was, yeah, when it really hit home the, the power of LSP and how you know it will take over uh, every uh, every IDE. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to thank Thea for you know proving that and uh, and showing the the power of it too. Correct. And uh, well, then we went one step further uh, and supported just VS Code extensions. So uh, of course, <laughs> we still uh, reuse the same servers then, but uh, we benefit from a lot of work done by the community. It's a huge library. Yeah. OK, um, Brian, anything else? Um, no, I think we can wrap it up. Um, I'm not seeing any further questions come in. Um, so have a good rest of the day, evening, and please join us for day two of Thayacon tomorrow.